Yeah. How's it going everyone? This is the Anime Man. Unpopular opinions, you hate them, I want to debate them. So let's fight! That's right, because you guys love the first episode so much, if you haven't seen the links in the description, I've decided to turn this unpopular debating show, Let's Fight, into a full series, and here is the second episode. You're welcome. But in all seriousness, I'm really glad that you guys enjoyed the first episode, and I loved making it, so we're gonna do a round two of this show, where I ask you guys on Twitter to give me some unpopular opinions using the hashtag Let's Fight, and I talk about it, debate with you, try and agree with it, try and disagree with it, and give you my points on all sorts of different unpopular opinions on anime. Sounds good? Without further ado, let's Fucking fight! The only reason to watch Bakemonogatari is to see the fourth opening. Wait, what? Hold on. Bakemonogatari. B a k e m o n o g a t a r i. Huh. That's a really interesting way of spelling Full Metal Alchemist. Fairy Tale is actually a good anime. <laughs> Okay, in all seriousness, let's actually talk about this because I know you guys have gotten on my ass about it. You've gotten on a lot of different anime YouTubers' ass about fairy tales, so I'm gonna tell you guys finally what I think about the show. Ah, uh, it's not a good anime. First of all, there is a reason why a lot of people like to call it the poor man's One Piece because it seems to have been a show that has taken all sorts of elements of One Piece, not exactly in the narrative aspect, but you know, the whole thing about just how a shonen is built and the way that the series flows and everything, but by calling it a poor man's One Piece, I feel that's a little bit of an insult to One Piece. Because to me, Fairy Tale isn't so much a poor man's One Piece as more of an attempt at a poor man's One Piece. I mean, I've always had such a difficult time trying to grasp how anyone can defend a show like Fairy Tale, you know, with its really inconsistent power ups, really inconsistent conclusion to arcs, really inconsistent characteristics. The fact that they've, I don't know, killed off Makarov like seven times and he's never stayed alive for more than five chapters. How Eriza can have all of the bones in her body shattered by her dragon mother with a meteorite headed straight towards her and yet with just one finger she can lift herself off of the ground, break the meteorite with her bare hands and then force her mother to kill herself. Logic, where you at? And even with the whole argument that some of my friends have had who are fans of fairy tale who have defended themselves by saying, oh, the only reason I watch fairy tale is because the girls are hot. Like, Mashima Hero's, like, female characters are fucking hot, dude. Like, even for, like, shonen standards, they're really fucking hot. So I only watch fairy tale and read fairy tale to look at the cute girls. But I don't know what the fuck they're on about because, to me, every female character in fairy tale looks the fucking same. And by that, I mean their facial features and their face looks exactly the same because Mashima Hiro can really only draw one type of female. I hate to compare, but yet again, One Piece does so much more of a better job at that because of the many different variations of how the girls look, how just the characters look compared to the things that you get in Fairy Tale. So I'm sorry to say fairy tale fans, although I'm sure many of you are quite aware of how I feel about that show at this point, but if you're new to here, then I'd just like to apologize by saying, no, fairy tale is not a good anime. If you want to enjoy it, then go for it. But there's a reason why many, many anime YouTubers who used to cover fairy tale stuff uh, kind of just abandoned it by the end of it because they kind of got the realization of, oh, yeah, it does suck. And here comes the dislike train, choo-choo. People are too concerned about which anime is the best slash better than the other when in truth not everyone has the same taste and it's perfectly okay to have different tastes and favorites in anime. This guy! Is that an unpopular opinion? I'm honestly not sure, but it's certainly a fucking rightful opinion. Look, I know it might sound a little bit hypocritical coming from someone like me who takes anime very seriously considering it's the thing that, you know, 
pays my rent. But I feel it's okay if a hyper-analytical anime YouTuber does a three-hour discussion video on why the Monogatari series is fantastic, but at the same time, on their off time, goes off and watches some Monster Musume. Like, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. If you like that shit, then that's fine. I'll go out of my way to praise highly sophisticated and artistically highly valued shows like Serial Experiments Lane or Haiba Nademe, but at the same time, I'll sit down in front of my computer and binge watch Yosugana Sora and Kiss Sis without a problem. I want to stand here and talk about anime in a highly sophisticated and intellectual way as well, but sometimes I just want to sit down and consume some garbage into my eyes. Not liking the art style of a show is not an actual reason to call it bad. One Piece, MOB, etc. I personally have never heard of anyone criticizing One Piece or Mob with its art style. Like, I feel the art style, especially with those two shows, is not so much a problem. When I think of shows that a lot of people judge based on art style, I think of series like Shinsekai Yori or Akunohana. Both series, by the way, which I personally think art style-wise, were fucking perfect for their narrative. Especially Akunohana. I feel a lot of people criticize the fuck out of Akunohana, the anime adaptation, because A, it was rotoscoped, and so it looked hyper-realistic, which is very different from its manga counterpart. But as much as I love the original manga, I feel that the hyper-realistic rotoscoping done by real-life actors, by the way, turned to animation, that's how they created the Akunohana anime, was perfect for the kind of creepy and, like, disturbing tones of the narrative of Akunohana. Like, if you know the story of Akunohana, you know that that shit is absolutely fucked up on multiple layers. And to have a kind of distorted, realistic, kind of warped look to it, it really adds to that discomfort that you feel just within the story. So yeah, the manga for, say, Akunohana was extremely disturbing, no doubt, because it is a disturbing story, but the anime just did something to it that just added a whole much bigger layer to it that the manga couldn't really fill its shoes in. And concerning things like Shinsekai Yori, I saw a lot of people who were criticizing the art style for being fucking weird, being like way too wobbly and warpy and just kind of distracting. And to them, I just think to myself, Shinsuke Yuri was one of the most beautiful anime of that year. I don't know what your standard of good art is, but if you don't see it in something like Shinsuke Yuri, which, again, I will go on record to say is probably one of the most artistically beautiful anime series out there, then I, I want to see what your you know, you think is a good art style, what you think is an absolutely beautiful anime. And this kind of fits in with the whole argument of why millennials, like younger anime watchers of today, give a really hard time to anime from the 70s and 80s. Like, they love to criticize the kind of strange, basically outdated art style of 70s and 80s anime without really batting an eye at its narrative quality or how much it's fucking exciting. It, like, it really breaks my heart to think that a younger generation of anime watchers, like today, will skip out on absolutely incredible series like Ashita no Jo or Ginga Eiyu Densetsu just because it looks old or feels old because of its art style. And it's sad. Like, honestly, it's really sad because those are some absolutely brilliant shows. Yes, looks-wise, they may not have aged all that well, but story-wise, they are absolutely timeless. And I think they deserve a lot more recognition, especially from the modern community. Not-so-good anime can have lit music scores. Yes, I agree. The only problem with that statement, or rather the sad realization about that statement, is the fact that music does have this kind of psychological effect on you, where it makes something especially more memorable if you enjoy the music of it, rather than if you didn't enjoy the music of it. Like, the whole reason why I remember very vividly of shows like Clanad, Fully Cooly, Samurai Champler is because the music paired with the visuals just burns this imprinting memory into your brain that you just cannot shake away, no matter how much anime you have watched in your life. But that's the thing, I feel music is just like an add-on to a memory of a show, and the better the show is, the more memorable it becomes. So, even if a show is terrible, but it has an awesome soundtrack, 
it's difficult to remember that soundtrack or that show because the show is bad itself. It's already by default difficult to remember. You, you see what I'm getting at? Like you will have a much easier time remembering a show with an average soundtrack than you will remember a bad show with a good soundtrack. And that's where I kind of agree and disagree with the statement. I agree that yes, there are shows that are bad that have fucking amazing soundtracks, but I disagree in the sense that they probably exist. I just can't name one off the top of my head right now. The X in Hunter Hunter should be pronounced. It's there and it should be acknowledged. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you about this one, man. Like, it's, it's not really our choice. Like, Togashi decided that the show was going to be called Hunter Hunter, not Hunter X Hunter. Like, that's the author's choice, not the choice of the viewer. Like, it's the choice of the creator to call it High School DD and Kiss Sis, rather than High School DXD and Kiss X Sis. Like, the only show that I can think of the top of my head that actually pronounces the X is Nuzzle no Kanojo X, but without that it would just be Nuzzle no Kanojo, which doesn't quite work in the same way. But again, like, it's not so much an unpopular opinion as just the choice of the creator. Like, you can still call it Hunter X Hunter, but... You need to understand that the official name for the series is Hunter Hunter. And it doesn't matter what you think, that's just what it is. Because saying this is kind of like saying, oh, it should be called Laws instead of Legend of Zelda. Like that, the Laws, the Laws name needs to be acknowledged more. But the thing is, is that Miyamoto and the Nintendo team called it Legend of Zelda, not Laws. Like you can still call it Laws, but the official name for it is still Legend of Zelda. You know what I'm getting at? A Silent Voice is a much better movie than your name. Thank you! This is definitely an unpopular opinion, especially if you ask the mainstream and especially if you ask the people who look at the statistics of how much more successful commercially your name did than A Silent Voice. Even though both did exceptionally well, uh, that year that both those movies came out was definitely uh, just triumphed by your name. Now look, it's not saying that I don't like your name. In fact, I did a whole video on your name when the movie first came out, when I first went to go watch it. Links in the description if you want to check that out. But I feel that the whole reason why A Silent Voice wasn't appreciated as enough as your name is because they both came out at a quite short span. And not to mention, the fans of A Silent Voice were way too critical about the movie because they were comparing it to its manga counterpart. Because I feel that if your name was a similar franchise, then it would have been dealt with the exact same way that A Silent Voice was. But it wasn't because it was a Shinkai Makoto original. Like, if your name was an original for whoever was directing A Silent Voice, then I feel that not as many people would have criticized it. If there was no official original source of that movie's counterpart, then I feel that it wouldn't have been put on such high criticism levels. But yes, I do agree with this statement. I think that just on an enjoyment level and a rewatchability level, and the fact that I cried at the end of A Silent Voice and didn't at the end of Your Name just makes A Silent Voice a much better movie for me than Your Name was. Akamega Kill was surprisingly entertaining. What? Are you saying entertaining in the sense that, like, it was entertainingly shit? Because then I'll agree with your statement on that. Look, I didn't mind Akamega Kill at first, but then when they started to just kill off all the characters because they could, and no matter how you put it, that's the only reason why they killed off all those characters. It's because they could, and they wanted to add some kind of shock factor to the series. If they just didn't do that way too much and completely ruin the fucking show for me, then yeah, it was pretty entertaining. Like, I feel the battle scenes were still entertaining, but again, there are plenty of fighting scenes like that in other anime that narratively as a whole are just much better than Akamega Kill and doesn't kill off all the characters for no fucking reason like Akamega Kill did. So yeah, Akamega Kill, surprisingly entertaining at first, but then surprisingly garbage by the end of it. Hajime no Ippo is way better than Kuroko and Haikyuu. <sighs> yes, I will agree on that, but I also don't think it's fair to compare those three series together. Like yes, all three of them are sports anime, no doubt, but the genre of sport is so different in all of them, thus the way that the narrative and the way that the animation and the way that everything as a story collectively goes for each of those sports differs so much that it's like comparing Fully Cooly to 
Samurai Champloo and Cowboy Bebop. Like, I would have agreed more with the statement if you had compared three series that are all following the same sport. Like, if you said something like, Slam Dunk is better than Kuroko and Real. Like, that would have made a little bit more sense because all three of those series are basketball, anime, and manga. And, uh, personally, that is a statement that I will stand by in this case. This decade has been the weakest era of anime's history. There were no masterpieces. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, John Weinberger, if that is your real name. Have you been watching anime this decade at all? Because a decade, 10 years, is a pretty goddamn long time if you think about it. Because within the last 10 years, there have been a lot of absolutely fucking fantastic anime that people are still talking about to this day that cover all sorts of different genres. Like, I'm looking it up right now. All you have to do is just do a Google search and you can see that series like Psycho Pass, Puella Magi Maduka Magica, Angel Beats, Terran Resonance, Anohana, uh, Shirobako, Kill the Kill. And those are all within the last 10 years. Like, that's a lot of really fucking good shows for a lot of different audiences. I don't know, John, if you're one of those people who are like old timers and only watch stuff from like the 70s and 80s and 90s and will be that kind of elitist who says, Oh, anime died in the 90s and everything in the 2000s, everything in the new millennium are all shit that the kids are just eating up like junk food then, dude, I don't know what to tell you. You've been missing out on 18 years of some pretty fucking good stuff, if you think about it. And I'm sure, John, that there are plenty of other people in the comments of this video right now who would be very happy to remind you of some other fucking fantastic, possibly masterpiece anime that came out in the 2010s, which I perhaps didn't just say. Kuroko no Basuke is better than Slam Dunk. It just oozes hype, while Slam Dunk is just kind of boring. Oh... You poor, poor soul. Let me just tell you one thing about Kuroko no Basuke that I just do not enjoy, and that's the fact that they added fucking shonen power-ups in a fucking sports anime. The one thing that made Slam Dunk this revolutionary sports manga back in the day, and it was a revolutionary sports manga, like, it caused a fucking cultural phenomenon back in the 90s when that first came out, was that Slam Dunk is just a basketball manga. That's it. It doesn't have any of these bullshit pretty characters. It doesn't have any of these bullshit shonen power-ups to win matches. It is just balls to the walls, raw dog, basketball, by some dudes who want to play basketball. And the beautiful simplicity of something like that, combined with the absolutely phenomenal artwork that went into the original manga, and even the anime adaptation, just stole the heart of everybody. And that's the thing, at the end of the day, Slam Dunk and Kuroko is the same sports concept presented to two completely different genders. I feel that fans of Slam Dunk are predominantly male, whereas fans of Kuroko are predominantly female. Because both of those series pertain and give you something that pertains to that particular gender. Something that the guys will really like are all crammed into Slam Dunk, while the stuff that the girls will like are all crammed into Kuroko no Basuke. So while I do absolutely disagree with this point that Kuroko is better than Slam Dunk, I do also understand where you're coming from, and I'm guessing, Dark Helm, that you are a female. If you're not a female, then just forget everything I said and know that you're wrong. Ergo Proxy is underrated and should be more appreciated. Yes, absolutely it should be more appreciated. But I also do understand why so many people can't get into it. It is very dialogue heavy, it is very existential, very epistemological, very heavy on the brain circuits, and uh, a lot of people don't like to watch anime that are like that. That's completely understandable. But I do definitely agree that fans of cyberpunk series especially need to watch Ergo Proxy. Like, that is a staple of cyberpunk that every anime fan and every cyberpunk anime fan needs to watch. And finally, the anime man is a good YouTuber. That's debatable. But guys, that's gonna do it for this episode of Let's Fight! 
Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to smack a like on this video. And if you didn't enjoy it and you are just sprinkling salt over your wounds right now, then uh, let me know your thoughts and opinions on any of the things that I said in this video in the comments below. And if you would like to participate in the next episode of Let's Fight, if you would like to fight me, clash of the opinions between you and me in the next episode, then make sure to leave your unpopular opinions on Twitter using that hashtag Let's Fight. Things get heated up, we have a great conversation, we have a great discussion, the comments love it, the haters love it, Everybody loves it. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. As always, like your favorite if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more banner, and I'll see you guys in the next video of whatever I make. Keep watching anime. Damn it!